Now we can all agree that the Concorde was definitely an engineering marvel, especially for the year of 1969. There are so many interesting things about this that I can talk about. A plane that's nearly a fountain of video ideas, you know, whether it's the whether it's the Rolls-Royce Megma, Olympus 593 engines that can actually do afterburnage, whether it's this airplane's tail landing gear that protects it from tail strikes. After all, the pitch angle of landing is very high. Or maybe even the snoot droop that comes down down and back up again for flying like what happens if anything goes wrong but something we haven't played around yet is the wings and that's something very interesting about the airplane as well kind of a delta wing but not really no this wing is called ojivo and it has a super interesting shape somehow they managed to find a wing shape that can make an airplane fly at supersonic speeds but also at slower speeds but one very interesting thing about a delta wing like this you know that's shaped like a triangle angle is how some planes don't need it at all. I mean, only a few days ago, we talked about the F-15 fighter jet, which is a plane that can fly with one wing cut off and some rudder. This airplane still perfectly flies. <laughs> Actually, I don't even need rudder now. I think I can just trim out the plane and now it flies perfectly. Interestingly, the same thing applies also to the F-14 Tomcat. Look at this, half the wing is gone and the airplane is still up in the air. Now cutting off the wing of a normal airliner definitely isn't a good idea, but the Concorde is kind of more like a fighter jet than an airliner. <sighs> so let's go ahead and ruin the wing. But you know, probably, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, this, the, the thing is, these engines are so powerful and this airplane gets up to speed so quickly. I mean, for normal flying, it needs a lot of speed anyway. Whereas a normal plane would take off at roundabout, hmm, let's say this airspeed, like 140 knots, we need a lot more, 180 knots. I feel more comfortable flying this plane at nearly like 200 knots. Nope, this airplane required the whole runway but this kind of extreme speed, and we just use the tail, tail gear, this extreme speed that the Concorde requires anyway gives me quite a lot of hope that I guess we can get our scapel out and do some, do some trimming. You remember the stupid hot knife challenge? It's about to do one. Ladies and gentlemen, this part will go. I think that's not a good idea. Uh, all right, I may have overdone it a little bit right there. Um... Mm, okay, I mean, look, we, uh, look, this is a big problem now. This airplane has an interesting configuration of wings, right? This plane doesn't really have ailerons or elevators, but it has these sort of flap surfaces that do everything. When we, for example, push the nose down, all of the control surfaces points of the plane points down. When we turn right, these things point up, whereas these would point down, they're gone. When we turn left, these things point down, whereas these things would point up. That, which isn't a thing anymore. Either way, I think we've, we've overdone it already. I think steering this airplane will be deadly, right? So let's go full power. The engines still work. And of course, what isn't simulated here is that we've kind of cut through the fuel tank as well. But we've got a great view now of the Rolls-Royce engines. All right, let's go take off. What I'm doing now is, um, uh, let's maybe put the snoot droop up. I mean, the nose visor doesn't really make an aerodynamic difference, really. It's just so that the pilots can look out of the window properly when taking off. I'm just wondering how this thing will go. At least all the engines are working, and I'm just hoping for this to somehow take off well. I might have want to use a bigger runway, but we're good. We're doing full power. After all, the good thing is that this Concorde has so much thrust to weight ratio when the afterburner is engaged, just like the F-15 fighter jet that lost the wing, that these might be able to propel the airplane so much to actually create lift in itself. But let's go full power. Let's go take off. Yeah? Yeah? Maybe we would... Well, oh my... God, I think I have overdone it. Indeed, we've done. I guess it makes sense. Less wing means less lift. And we definitely have less wing. Um, let's see. I'm gonna use the entire runway here. We're now at 210 knots. I wanna make sure this airplane feels comfortable. We need to be really fast with this kind of wing configuration. And we gotta really carefully take off now. Maybe like this. That is definitely way too much. We've lost, I mean, to be honest, nearly half of the wing. That, uh, we probably overdid it. Something we could do, though, is with a little bit of luck, spawn in to midair right here, get the airplane to proper ground speeds, and then it flies. Okay, never mind. We've completely broken it. This is not good. This is, uh, we... All right, I think something might be really broken now. Uh... 
Okay, I have another idea. See, all looks good here, but nothing looks good here. This is now maybe the quick version of the Concord. We have less drag now coming from wings that because they barely exist anymore. So the Swiss is our one top tip. Probably if you would have a mid-air collision that would shear your wing off, make sure they're both cut off. Try to crash into two airplanes at the same time if you have the... But you have no choice, do you? But anyway, we can still go full power. Um, you weigh a lot less, and the third plane now looks like yeah, a classic, a chicken right there. Let's go full power. So far, you don't really notice anything. I mean, this looks a little bit weird. Other than that, everything is good. In fact, we can speed up extremely quickly now. We have less drag, less weight. We can definitely fly extremely fast. So I wonder, we might actually be able to fly the third plane, and I'm genuinely curious, because like no other airliner could fly up to this speed right there so we might be able to use that little wing we do have yeah no right okay maybe you need to flood the airplane very carefully maybe you have to streamline it now and we will not fly up to so much speed i'm just gonna use yet yeah, what we have right now because the problem was we went a little bit too fast on the first try and this is a lot better that is no control at all. You really do need those wings, do you? Ha! Mm -hmm. After all, this shape is very interesting, and we've cut up all the way up to here. So mad. So whereas a fighter jet has enough thrust in the afterburner's engines to still keep flying like a literal missile, the Concorde just doesn't have that. It's too heavy and not enough power. So let's go ahead and restore this wing. Ah, a lot better. I guess, you know, after all, this airplane does not have horizontal stabilizer in the back. So it turns out the Concorde is a plane that really, really needs its wing. But what about the wing on top? The vertical stabilizer. Huh. Oh no! The hot knife has str oh has quite struck. Oh wow, that's a lot. I mean, we tried this out with the 747, but these planes are so different. Whereas JAL123 has shown us that losing uh, the vertical stabilizer is no good idea. I think it's interesting to find this out with the Concorde. How would this fly now with half of the vertical stabilizer gone? I am very interested in finding this out. As you can see, yep, this is modeled. There's not, okay. Oh my God, oh my, wait, 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 wait. This airplane is funny because it actually like completely drifts now. All right, let's go take off, which actually works surprisingly. Yeah, look at that, the airplane flies. It just won't fly very well, especially in something like a turn. This airplane is extremely unstable. The classic thing that happens when you lose part of the vertical stabilizer is that the plane like starts to like snake around, you know? And that's kind of what's happening here, but to be honest, I'm quite happy. Maybe they could have built a more sporty version of this plane with a smaller vertical stabilizer. I think crosswind landing though will be quite awkward, but we're really quick now. We are insanely fast, holy moly. And what we definitely have now is quite a lot of roll authority. Look at that, we can definitely like do a aileron roll with this plane now, or it can even come in for a landing. Yeah, it's always funny to see when planes lose the vertical stabilizer. It looks a little bit like it's flying in sort of crosswind. It's never really stabilized on the yaw axis, of course, but this is definitely still flyable. All right, let's go ahead and land it. Absolutely no problem at all. Okay, that was a bit of a hard landing, I admit, but this is fine. We can stop, no problem. So, does this plane need any? vertical stabilizer at all oh no the concord has lost the vertical stabilizer i think this will not go well it never goes well the concord though seems to only need very little surface it's just that this is not a, this is not enough i reckon let's go the problem is and you really notice that already on takeoff you have no rudder so like you can only move the airplane on the ground by using the braking you know the actual nose wheel which is not very helpful, and you start to already slack here, even while uh, not even in the air. All right, let's take off. Uh, okay, this will go periodically. This will go really badly. Hey, hey, we nearly landed on the landing. Oh, this is absolutely hopeless. 
guess this is super interesting. Without a rudder at all, this airplane just steers around like a boat that doesn't have a rudder. You know what I mean? Like, so already, even before we leave the ground, it like leaves the center line, even though we don't touch anything at all. And we can fly for like a few seconds, maybe, but then the plane will already start spinning out of control like that. And then we'd lose it and we can't save it. Okay, this test has been honestly quite self explanatory. Who would it expect an airplane to need wings? Hmm. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this useless video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night.